Welcome back to Franchise Football and Travel Week for the Falcons as they challenge the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence is hovering right at 500 ball this season. Lawrence is having a terrible time motivating his team to do any better than that and has dropped to the number 22 quarterback in the league. However, it is his rookie campaign and some seasoning is obviously going to make him a much better leader for the offense. Could this be one of those weeks that he has a breakout game? The rain might put a damper on his efforts to do that. Both teams have a better performing defense than offense, so could it be that we'll see a defensive battle here today? It's forecasted to rain through the entire game, so that could be a contributing factor in the performance of each team's passing attack. Will that mean we'll see more of each team's rushing prowess? Let's find out as we take you to the action here on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Quez Watkins is back for the Falcons and Josh Lambeau gets us underway here in Jacksonville. Watkins fields the ball inside the 10 and brings it out just shy of the 30 yard line. Ryan in the shotgun, steps back, lets it fly and is incomplete intended for Geronimo Allison. Again, out of the shotgun and the pass is off and caught for a first down past the 40 yard line. Russell Gage with the snag. All alone in the backfield, the throw and it's complete on the sideline to Gage for an eight yard gain. Another pass over the middle, caught by Kyle Pitts for another Falcon first down. Now on third and 10, back to pass, Ryan lets it go, complete and another first down to Pitts at the 32 of the Jaguars. Now, Ryan all alone in the backfield, completes this one on the sideline, out of bounds. Andy Isabella was the receiver, and from the 20 yard line, it's a catch by Calvin Ridley inside the 15 yard line. Make it third and three. Ryan back to pass, throws a wobbler, and it's incomplete in the end zone. And I'm sure that's going to bring out the field goal team. And it does. Young Wei Ku from the 20 yard line, a 30 yard kick. It's up and good. The Falcons take the early lead here in Jacksonville. Now the Jaguars hoping to respond. Trevor Lawrence back, completes this one out to the 40 yard line. DJ Chark catching a dart from Lawrence. And from the 41, it's going to be Chark again. Another catch at the 48, between the 48 and 49. Lawrence back to pass, completes this one inside the 40 yard line. Marvin Jones Jr., the receiver on the other side, getting in on the action. Lawrence all alone in the backfield, drops back, throws, and it's complete with a nice little move and run by LaVisca Chenault, the star out of Colorado. Lawrence throws, complete, out of the backfield to Chenault, and he has the first down. Lawrence takes the snap from under center, throws over the middle, complete to Tyler Eifert inside the 20, and it's another first down, and a red zone trip for the Jaguars. Bulling his way ahead is James Robinson inside the 10, or right there at the 10 is where they're gonna mark it, and this pass is complete inside the five. Jones tackled just outside the three and Eifert 
catches the pass inside the end zone. Touchdown, Jaguars. Lawrence with the quick pass. And he finds an open Tyler Eifert. Just a simple up and out. And McMillan can't stay with him long enough to prevent that from being a touchdown. So 7-3 to three is your score. And back and back and tackled. Sacked in the backfield is Ryan. Caleb on chasing gets to him back at about the 19-yard line. Third and 19, and it's intercepted. Ray Sean Jenkins takes it back inside the 20-yard line, and that puts the Jaguars in a red zone situation again here in the first quarter. I would expect a lot of turnovers here in this kind of weather, but that one is hard to swallow right in your backyard. Now, Jones with the catch inside the 15 yard line. Third and four. And down and tackled inside the five is Jones again. And how on second and goal. Lawrence standing tall in the pocket, completes it to Chenault at the one. Surprisingly, they mark it at the two. And the pitch out to Robinson, and he is tackled in the backfield. Doesn't even get to the five yard line. And that brings up fourth and goal and the end of the first quarter. Now with Josh Lambeau on a 23 yard boot and it's up and good. So the Jaguars take a 10 to three lead here at the beginning of the second quarter. Hawkins with the carry up the middle and he gets out past the 30 yard line Third and four now. Ryan alone in the backfield, throws over the middle and it's caught. Andy Isabella for the first down out past the 40 yard line. Ryan under center, takes the snap and hands off. Puka Williams on the carry and he's inside Jaguar territory at the 47. Just shy of the sticks, and that one Love picks up with no problem. So on second and 10, the pass complete to Gage for a seven yard pickup. And from the 39, the pass over the middle again is complete Calvin Ridley for the first down. Now from the 31, Ryan passes complete to Pitts inside the 30 yard line for a five yard pickup. Out of the shotgun again. The handoff goes to Love and he is dragged down at the line of scrimmage. Third and four and uh oh. Caleb on Chasen is being escorted to the locker room, limping pretty badly, and that could be devastating to the linebacking crew of the Jaguars. We'll have to get more information on that one. Now on fourth and one, the pitch out goes to Love. Oh, he takes the outside, and he probably should have gone inside, and he does not make the sticks. Lawrence now hands off to Travis Etienne and he gets out past the 30 yard line. A six yard pickup, brings up third and four. The pass goes out to Ivert and he has the first down at the 39 yard line. Lawrence in the backfield, hands off to Etienne and he gets out past the 40 yard line for a four yard pickup. 
Second and six. Again, he gives off to ATN, and he has stopped in the backfield. Eric Harris making that big hit. Third and six. And Lawrence on the move. Oh, what a move. And he makes it to the first down marker and passed it. That is what I would call the intangibles that Trevor Lawrence brings to this Jaguar football team. And another completion. DJ Chark catches it over on the right side boundary for another first down. Now third and nine. Just inside the 30 yard line. The catch made by Eifert and he gets to the 25 and well short of the first down marker. Bringing us to the two minute warning with your score 10 to three. Josh Lambeau comes out for a 42 yard field goal and it's up and good. The Jaguars take a 10 point lead just before halftime. A minute 46 left and the pass is complete to Ridley at the 32. The Falcons now in the no huddle and the pass over the middle is complete to Allison. And that's the first down from the 45. Back to pass. And he can't find anybody open. And Ryan is sacked. Josh Allen getting to him back inside the 35. And this one is complete to Pitts. And he's tackled just shy of the 50-yard line. That brings up third and six, and the pass is out of bounds. Intended for Hurst on the sideline, and that takes us to halftime. The score, 13 to three, with the Jaguars on top. Now let's go to Eurocat Baby with the halftime report. Welcome to the Toyota Halftime Report. We'll get you back to the Falcons and Jaguars in a moment. First, for the Jaguars, we have some bad news for K. LeVon Chasen. It seems that he dislocated a hip and will be out of action for at least four weeks. That means that backup Jordan Smith will be plugged into his linebacker spot. He's a borderline practice squad player, but he's impressed the coaching staff here in Jacksonville, so he needs to take advantage of a great opportunity to make a positive impact. In other games, going on right now the Buccaneers are taking it to the Colts it looks as if both the running and passing attacks are on point as they lead going into halftime 24 to nothing the number one and three teams in the AFC are going at it in Houston Deshaun Watson has passed and run for over 200 yards as the Texans lead the Jets at the break 23 to 7 Meanwhile, here in a rain-soaked game in Jacksonville, Matt Ryan threw a first-quarter interception that led to a score and a 10-point Jaguar lead here at the break. Can Atlanta make a comeback here in the rain? Stay tuned to find out, because we'll be right back with the second half. Welcome back to TIAA Bank Field here in Jacksonville. The Falcons are finding out that playing in the rain in an outdoor stadium isn't such an easy thing to do. The Jags are up by 10 points in a game that is definitely seeing two evenly matched defenses taking control. Have the Falcons made the right adjustments to make a comeback in the second half? Let's find out. The Jaguars have the first possession of the second half. From the 27, Lawrence throws over the middle, complete to Jones. He has a seven yard gain. The Jaguars loading up on the right side. They give off to Robinson, has the first down. Tackle just over the 37 yard line. Out of the shotgun. The pass by Lawrence is complete. Chark is tackled for a nine yard gain. And this hand up, no, it's a play action pass thrown deep and Chark 
with the reception inside Falcon territory at the 35. Lawrence on third and seven, can't find an open receiver and is finally taken down, sacked by Barkevius Mingo. Josh Lambeau is coming on for a 62 yard field goal and it's no good. He had the length just off to the left. Now Ryan over the middle, complete. First down, Russell Gage. The Falcons working on a short field after that long field goal attempt by the Jaguars and Pitts. It's inside the 30 for an eight yard pickup. Second and two, Love picks up the first, but just barely. Hit by Sidney Jones and driven backward. The pass this time goes to Love out of the backfield. He's tackled at the 20 yard line. Now on third and two. The pass over the middle is complete. Calvin Ridley tackled inside the 10 yard line and another red zone visit for the Falcons. The pass complete to Pitts and he's down to the five. Second and goal out of the shotgun. The handoff given to Love and he powers his way into the end zone. Touchdown Falcons. Atlanta trying to make a comeback in this game. They got it done on the ground that time. Here on the replay, you'll see Love just carrying a den full Oh my goodness, one, two, three, four, five, six Jaguars into the end zone. And that makes the score 13 to 10, Jacksonville. Alone in the backfield, Lawrence finally finds ATN out past the 30 yard line for a seven yard pickup. And that's a play action pass. And it's intercepted. A.J. Terrell taking care of business. His third interception on the season. And you'll see as soon as we get to the replay that that pass was way too long. Jones playing defense on the play. And Terrell, all he had to do is let the ball fall into his hands and it's an interception. Now from 37, it's complete across the middle to Allison. He has the first down out at midfield. Ryan out of the shotgun throws and it's Pitts complete inside the 45 yard line for a seven yard pickup. Second and three. Oh, what a beautiful pass to Ridley. And that's another first down for the Falcons. Now from outside the 27, the handoff goes to Williams. He's running up the left side and out of bounds at the 11. Another red zone trip for the Falcons. And the pass coming up. Ryan. Can't find anybody open and takes the sack. Miles Jack gets him back at the 22 yard line. So third and 21. And that is incomplete trying to fit it in to Allison at the goal line. Young Wei Koo with a 39 yard field goal in it that makes it 13-13. This ball game is all tied up and brand new. The give is to Robinson with a lot of room up the right side hash marks for a nine yard pickup. Third and one and Lawrence calls his own number and he's finally taken down at the 48 yard line. Now first and 10. Back to pass. Lawrence is, has it completed over the middle 
to Eifert for the first down. And the Jaguars are on the move from just outside the 36 of the Falcons. It's complete to Eifert again, very close to the first down, not getting there at second and inches. And who do they give it to but Robinson, and he picks up the first down. So from the 25, Lawrence back to pass, can't find anybody, throws it in, completes it to Jones just out the, outside the 15. The pass this time is intercepted. Deron Harmon with the pick, had blockers, and he is all the way inside Jaguar territory, taking it all the way to the 46-yard line. Lawrence trying to get it to Eifert, threw it well off the mark, and Harmon was all too willing to take that off of the Jaguars' hands. So from the 46, the handoff goes to Love, and he's up the middle to the 41. Second and six. And Love again has the first down. Big yardage inside the 35, and there's a flag. This one's coming back. How far? The flag on Geronimo Allison, and it will be third and one. The give is to Puka Williams, and he cannot make the first down. So on fourth and one, Young Way Koo from 54. Is it good? No, but after a three and out by the Jaguars, the Falcons have it again. Although inside their own five-yard line, Hawkins takes it out to the eight for five-yard pickup. Ryan throws over the middle, first down. Kyle Pitts to the 19-yard line. Now out of the shotgun. The handoff is to Love, and he's tackled at the 25. That brings up second and three. Pass complete over the middle to Pitts again, and another first down. Ryan drops back, throws complete, short to Russell Gage. And now we're looking at second and six. Up the middle, powers his way for first down. Oh, they're not gonna give it to him. Third and one went Hawkins and Love has big yardage all the way down inside the 45 yard line of the Jaguars. Just over four minutes to go in this contest and we are coming down to crunch time. Out of the shotgun. Ryan throws complete to Ridley, and he loses the football. Ripped out by, I think, Joe Schobert, and that will be verified on the replay. And picked up by C.J. Henderson. The Jaguars now have the opportunity to take it the other direction. And to win this football game with two minutes, 31 seconds left on the clock. Tyler Davis with the reception short. And that brings us to the two minute warning. The Falcons hoping for a turnover of some kind here from the 24 yard line. Lawrence forced out of the pocket, makes a nice juke. A first down and all the way out to the 35. No huddle for the Jaguars. Now to the 40 goes Robinson. Actually, he's uh, tackled at the 43. So it makes it second and two. That is complete to Chark inside the 45 of the Falcons. Lawrence throws and another first down to Ivert. This time at the 32. 
Robinson takes it up the middle. Jacksonville keeping it on the ground and making Atlanta use their timeouts from just outside the 25. Robinson takes it inside the 24 first down and a red zone visit for the Jaguars. Another big, oh, what a big hole for Robinson and he's all the way inside the five yard line and with 13 seconds left, there is nothing to do but wait for the field goal. Josh Lambeau puts it through. The Falcons with two seconds left on the clock. Ryan back to pass, throws deep, and it's incomplete. And the Jaguars win the football game. 13 to 10 is your score. So in a soggy situation, the Falcons don't have the time to push the ball down the field for the winning score, and the Jaguars pull out the win. This was a contest that was so close in every respect that it wasn't very surprising to see that the game came down to the final seconds before the winning score was posted. The offenses were 10 yards apart. Both teams had two turnovers, and even the time of possession was within a minute and a half of each other. I have to say that although Ryan threw that one interception in the first half, he looked pretty solid for this game. Neither quarterback had a passer rating that was phenomenal, but each played under some tough conditions, and I have to say uh, that they did a pretty good job of leading their respective offenses. Just a thought, though. Uh, now, if Bryce Love intends on being the future back of the Falcons, he's really going to have to up his game. A 2.7-yard average per carry is not what's needed. But I will say this. <laughs> This was a really bad game for him because he's at a 4.2 yard average for the season so far, but only has 43 touches to his credit. I may be wrong, but it just seems that Atlanta needs to decide on a back and run with that decision. Flopping around really isn't doing any of these guys a whole lot of good, but we'll have to see how the coaching staff really responds to that. In the passing game, of the 28 completions made, the vast majority were short throws or out of the backfield connections, so the short pass is definitely what was ordered up for this game. It would be nice to see some longer throws, but at this point, maybe the offensive line isn't capable of maintaining blocks that long. They did have a few sacks in this game so who knows they do have some young guys on the line and that capability may only come with experience on the job on the defensive side of things i'm not sure what's going on with eric harris the past few weeks he's been playing some very sound football lately and today he's on the top of the tackle category for the game I know that he's 31 years old and he'll most likely be regressing going into future seasons, but he sure seems to be peaking now that he's matured a little bit. Kind of a shame that his contract is up for renewal at the end of the season. I wonder what the Falcons will do. He'll get the chance to prove he's like fine wine when Tom Brady and the Bucks invade Atlanta for their second meeting of the season. The Falcons will need to forget that loss in week two down in Tampa and hope for a little revenge this time around. Tampa Bay is not just running away with the NFC South this season and from the look of things, they'll have to do some really spectacular things to make the playoffs this season. They're currently sitting at 6-5, and five, but I would think they're going to give Atlanta all they can handle come game time next week. 
Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the MMC Broadcasting Network. Atlanta played some solid football today, but couldn't come away with a win in Jacksonville. A second half surge by the Falcons just wasn't enough to stop the Jags from recovering a Calvin Ridley fumble, then driving the field for the winning field goal. Dominating was the play of the defense on both sides today, and given the weather situation, lots of mistakes were made from both offenses. Can the Falcons recover and give the Buccaneers a game to remember? It seems that Atlanta is content with running a two-back system with Love and Williams, and it'll be apparent if they made the right decisions in the coming weeks. Either way, it looks as if the weight of this season is on the shoulders of Matt Ryan. Can he make up for a mediocre running attack? Be with us to find out when the Bucks come to town, and until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now, and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>